The CPU is basically the brain of your PC. Without it, your computer is just a useless pile of metal. So, of course, I decided to do something completely unreasonable, trying to run AAA games on a $1 CPU. Yeah, a CPU that costs less than a bottle of water. We're talking about games that normally expect multiple cores, high clock speeds, and modern architectures, not a chip you buy for one single dollar. I wasn't even sure it was possible to find a $1 CPU, let alone boot a game. But that's exactly why today's question is simple. Can a $1 CPU actually run AAA games? Or is this going to be a complete disaster? There's only one way to find out. $1 AAA games. And probably a lot of patience. The challenge sounds simple. Play games on a $1 CPU, but actually finding a CPU that costs exactly $1? That's a whole different story. I kept scrolling through eBay and scrolling and scrolling some more. The list felt endless, but my hope? About as thin as candy wrapper paper. 20 bucks, 15 bucks, 9.99. Still too expensive. So I tweaked the filters, changed the keywords, tried everything I could think of, desktop, laptop, server, tray, boxed, and at some point I realized I wasn't really searching for a CPU anymore. I was searching for a miracle. And honestly, there was a moment where I almost gave up. Surrounded by old, time-worn chips that looked like they'd survived multiple eras of computing history, I was genuinely losing hope. Please, just give me one CPU that still works, costs exactly $1, and isn't basically a cosplay prop. And then, it happened. One listing, $1. No long description, no 9-day auction, no red warning text. Just a familiar name hitting me like a jackpot. Intel Pentium G630, 2 cores, 2.7 gigahertz. A chip that once ruled the budget PC space over a decade ago? Is it powerful by 2026 standards? Absolutely not. But honestly, at that moment, I didn't care. It was a real CPU, and it cost exactly $1. I don't know if the seller was clearing out inventory, needed a dollar for snacks, or if the PC building gods were just smiling at me that day. But right then, I stopped analyzing. I stopped questioning. I knew one thing. If I didn't buy it immediately, I'd regret it forever. My finger hit buy now faster than this chip will ever push FPS. The hunt ended in complete desperation, and also pure luck. One dollar, one CPU, and a brand new challenge officially begins. Pentium G630 is on its way, and now, we're about to find out. Is one dollar only enough for display shelf nostalgia, or can it actually play games? Alright, this is where the real challenge begins. Today's main character, the Intel Pentium G630, priced at exactly one dollar. I open the case, pull out the old CPU, and at that moment, I'm thinking just one thing. Please don't be a dead piece of metal. First install? Yeah? I was way too confident. No grounding, no BIOS reset. Moving fast like I'm racing a deadline. I drop the chip into the socket, lock the latch, hit the power button. The fan spins for one second, and then nothing. No BIOS, no signal, not even a courtesy beep. The case just sits there, silent, judging me. I try again, and again. Swap RAM slots, pull the CMOS battery, say a quick prayer just in case. Still, black screen, no boot, no life. That's when it hits me. Did I really buy a $1 CPU that's worth exactly $1 because it's dead? So I grab another CPU with the same socket, plug it in, hit power, same result. Three attempts, three failures, and now things get worse. I start to smell something, not the usual oops smell, but the, but the hardware is dying smell. I pull the cooler off, look closely at the socket, and oh, oh no, bent pins, and a small burnt mark right near the contact area. The conclusion is painful but obvious. The $1 CPU didn't kill the system, I did. Too much force, too many hot tests, and boom, the motherboard sacrificed itself. $1 for the CPU. But the price of the mistake? An entire motherboard. But the video can't end like this, so I order another board. This time fully tested before shipping. Two weeks of waiting, which somehow feels longer than a Minecraft update. I install the CPU that came with the board first. Hit power, and this time, BIOS instantly. Signal, life, hope, that's the moment I knew. I could redeem myself. I carefully dropped the Pentium G630 into the new socket. This time a textbook install, grounded. Fresh thermal paste, latch closed gently like I'm proposing marriage. I press power, detected, Pentium G630. I couldn't help but laugh. 
I hunted this thing in desperation. Killed a motherboard because of it. And now, it's greeting me in BIOS. The hunt ended in disaster, but, that, but the experiment just came back to life. And now, we're finally ready to answer the real question. How far can a $1 CPU actually go when it comes to gaming? With a CPU like this, I could make its life easier, run Windows XP, Windows 7, or some ultra-light Windows 10 build. But that wouldn't be fair. If we're judging this the way a normal person would use it, I'm not going to baby it. So I'm sticking with Windows 10 Pro 64-bit, the same OS most people actually run. Before the test, I checked CPU-Z, and yes, it's a legit Pentium G630. Performance is exactly what the name suggests. 404 multi-core, 237 single-core. Congrats, my old Celerons finally have a worthy sparring partner. At 480p video, it's totally fine. Smooth playback, no issues at all. 720p still works, but CPU usage is already flirting with 90%. One extra tab and things get awkward. Then comes 1080p. CPU hits 100% instantly, stutters show up, frames drop, and the illusion falls apart. So yeah, it can do the basics, but the moment you ask for more, this $1 CPU reminds you exactly why it only cost a dollar. Not the strongest start for this CPU, but let's move on to the first actual game test, Counter-Strike 1.6. And honestly, if you didn't know what CPU was inside, you'd never guess this thing cost $1. The experience is surprisingly solid. FPS is capped at 100 by the game, and the Pentium G630 isn't even trying. CPU usage sits around 50%. Smooth, responsive, no different from much more expensive CPUs. But let's be real. How about this is a super light test. Pretty much any CPU with a pulse can run CS1.6. So the real question is, what happens when we throw something heavier at it? Maybe even an AAA title. Next up is Left 4 Dead. At low settings, 1080p, it's rough, around 18 FPS, and when more zombies show up, it drops to 14 FPS. Stuttery, uncomfortable, and honestly not playable. Dropping to 720p adds maybe 5 to 10 FPS, but it doesn't really save the experience. But there's a problem. The integrated graphics are just too weak, so I had no choice. I added a GT710 with 1GB of VRAM to give this CPU a fighting chance with newer games. That brings us to Minecraft. At 1080p, two chunks, the game is surprisingly stable. FPS isn't the focus here. Consistency is, and it holds up pretty well. But once I push it to eight chunks, the CPU starts to struggle. More world data means more work, and frame drops become noticeable. Things completely fall apart when I push it to 32 chunks. I take a few steps, and the stuttering hits immediately. Even though the GPU is still pushing decent FPS on paper, the CPU just can't keep up. So frame pacing collapses and everything feels choppy. Moving on to an older AAA title, Tomb Raider. At 1080p low settings, the game is actually playable. I won't deny it leans heavily on the GPU, but the CPU manages to hold things steady at around 30 FPS without the constant stuttering we saw earlier. Next up is CS2. Here, the CPU is clearly uncomfortable, like its bar pinned at 100% usage almost the entire time. Still, it manages to keep FPS hovering around 20, which honestly isn't terrible considering the hardware. Then there's GTA 5 at full HD. This one struggles. FPS sits around 15 and it's far from smooth. If you're running this CPU dropping down to 720p, is pretty much mandatory for a better experience. Finally, The Witcher 3. Even at 720p on low settings, FPS barely hits 10, and stability really isn't great. That said, for a game this demanding, the fact that a $1 CPU can even launch it and keep it running at all is kind of a small miracle. So, can a $1 CPU run AAA games? Technically, yes, it launches them. Sometimes. But let's be honest, this Pentium G630 is completely out of its depth. Two cores, ancient architecture, low clocks. In 2026, that's just suffering in silicon form. Most modern AAA games are less playable and more proof of concept. Still, for $1, the fact that it can even boot AAA titles is kind of impressive. Just not in a way you'd actually want to live with. Let me know what you think about this $1 CPU in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.